what's up? This is Leslie Christine. And right now, I have in the studio with me, Stuart Holder from the Houston Dynamo. Holla. What's up? <laughs> so, okay, first let's talk about you before we um, get really into the topic. So, you played soccer for the Dynamo, and apparently you uh, went to the Olympics, which is a big deal. So, how was that experience? Uh, it's probably the best experience, you know, sporting-wise and, you know, of, of my life. You know, it was an uh, incredible experience. Uh, opening ceremonies was just, you know, walking out in the stadium and just around all the, you know, the big-time athletes and walking out with Kobe Bryant and LeBron James and, you know, all those guys was, was pretty special. And then, you know, I scored a goal in the first game against Japan, which is uh, still ranks up there as, the you know, the best moment of my sporting career to date. I would think so. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's pretty major. You scoring a goal at, at the Olympics. And so how was it uh, being around all these, you know, super uber athletes? Uh, it's it's pretty cool, but you know, you, I try not to be starstruck because you're you like you know they're your peers, they're on the same team as you. There's you know they're they're all of this, so you know they're all down to earth, really cool guys, and you know all willing to hang out and just be part of Team USA. And uh, it was that was kind of a special feeling we had going on over there, and especially you know when all the athletes met each other and presidents there, and and you know everybody's just kind of interacting. It was it was a really cool experience, and you know hopefully I can meet some of these guys again in the future. Okay, well let's go ahead and uh, talk about today's issue, which is. Basically, I just wanted to talk about athletes and women and how do you build a relationship with a woman. <laughs> I do want to um, do some quotes. Uh, I don't know if you know about Will Dem. Um, he did an article in Essence Magazine, and basically this is what he was talking about. It's about uh, these breezies. He called them breezies. Breezies. Uh, yes. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm gonna read you a few quotes from his, um, from his article here, and we're just going to kind of talk about that. Okay? Groupies are everywhere I go. They study the football schedule for whatever city I'm at that week, and after the game, will stand in the shivering cold waiting for me to walk outside and take a notice. Or they go to the club ahead of time, scheming to cop VIP access. They hang in packs like vultures at the venues thick with players, poised with their breasts spilling out of their shirts. They don't care to get to know me as a person or share my triumphs or pains. All they see are dollar signs and a free ride. I've flown beautiful women with agendas to big games and events across the country. I've wined and dined them at the fanciest restaurants, knowing that I could have shared my bed with three at a time if I wanted. I know God has better for me. What I really crave is love, tenderness, and understanding, and an intimate partnership with a woman that could become my wife. And, you know, I know we look at that and say, oh, he wants to get married and, like, be with one woman. But before you can actually be with somebody, you have to meet someone, yeah. right? And I'm pretty sure females around town know who you are. You're an attractive yeah. guy, you know? So Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so I'm sure when you go out, you know, they're like, oh, you know, they know who you are. How do you go about meeting females, you know, if, if, it, okay, first of all, are you single? Are you married? What's, what's your name? I'm, I'm newly single, yeah. Oh, newly single, okay. Yeah. So you out there playing the field? Uh, something like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so when you go out, you know, and I'm pretty sure since you're newly single, you're not looking to be involved in a deep, deep relationship or anything like that. But, you know, your ex-girlfriend, okay, how did you meet her? Uh, I met her through uh, some friends and, you know, we were actually friends for maybe eight or nine months before we decided to start dating. So um, we actually had a, you know, a really healthy relationship and she was the kind of a girl that I'd known before, before I kind of, you know, my career took off and before I kind of, the whole soccer thing became, you know, like, you know, people recognizing you around town and, you know, people who knowing who you are. So that was kind of, kind of cool for me. And, you know, we're still good friends to this date and, you know, who, who knows if something will happen again in the future. But, um, you know, it, it is difficult, I guess, going around and, and people knowing who you are and, you know, maybe people being that you've known before and then people that you still know and they're kind of maybe act differently towards you when they see you out. And you can tell that they're a little extra, you know, a little, a little more willing to talk to you or, you know, they can make more time out of their day for you because, you know, maybe they think they can get something in return or, you know, you never really know what it is and, and that's why it's kind of tough and you have to be a good judge of character, I think, when you're, uh, when you're a, a quote unquote celebrity in the, in Houston. I think you have to kind of, you know, balance that and know who's 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 genuine and who's not and, and what, what it comes down to is your own personal judge because you, you never really know until you get burned. Right. So have you experienced anybody that maybe, let's just say from the past that you knew, you know, maybe with the high school, with the college, whatever, and, you know, now you're, you're like Stuart Holden, you know, big guy, you know, do they, you know, have you had anybody that's come to you and, try, you know, basically try to, I'm not going to say use you, but just, you know, yeah, a I, female that's, you know, trying to get with you, basically. Yeah, I've actually had it work both ways. Um, you know, people that I've maybe known before and then now are, are more, you know, willing to badmouth me and, and talk about things I've done in the past to kind of make themselves look better. And 
and things like that. And then obviously it, it works another way. Maybe somebody who was maybe a girl that you, you knew in high school that maybe was not that not that into you, you know, was you know you were friends with, and then not, all of a sudden you see her again now, and she's like, wow, you know, how have you been? Oh my gosh, you know, I've I've been following you, and it, it's kind of like she didn't even the, know your name in high school. Role reversal, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> complete role reversal. So it's it's weird, and and uh, it's it's kind of cool all in the same all at the same time because you know kind of growing up you know being the soccer player in high school and then now being a professional here in Houston obviously I know a lot more people than you know most most people on our team and me, I'm kind of recognized more because I'm the you know the local kid the kid who's come from Houston who's now you know a, a, a player for the Dynamo so it's it's a cool feeling but it, you know there's a lot of things that come with that so so you know when you go out do you see yourself being cautious about who you talk to um yeah i do i mean obviously because i was in a relationship for for eight or nine months just recently it's, it's kind of different now but um yeah it, you you know i have i have a lot of friends and a lot of the teammates you know we kind of go out and after games and you know we, we have our fun and uh but at the same time i think we're a little cautious and you know we kind of you kind of keep people sometimes at a distance and and you allow those you know you get to know people better over time and then those are the people that get close to you you know girls included um you know maybe you take a girl out to dinner and you just you know i've, I've always been one that kind of likes to take it slow with girls because if you know if you let them get too close too quickly then you know it can kind of go go downhill really quickly so it's 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 tough i guess to to meet somebody that you know is really genuine and you know and, and outgoing and, and smart and you know just all the things you want in a girl i guess and for for a girl you're gonna date um because you know it's t at girls at clubs obviously uh not no necessarily <laughs> Well, uh, you know, the, the, you, the, the good ones, I guess, are few and far between, and, and they're tough to find, but, you know, it, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. It's not a tough thing, but... <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine so. Well, okay. Now, with that being said, um, you know, it doesn't sound like you've had any kind of uh, bad experiences with females, you know, um, and I'm pretty sure some of your teammates may have, you know, but... You know, I have a lot of friends that are athletes, and they tell me a lot of horror stories about females and the thing, the links they go through to try to get to them, and this, that, and the other. You know, so it sounds like you've been very fortunate in that area not to have, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, we do have obviously the the major. I, I don't like calling them groupies. You know, right. I prefer calling them fans or whatever. But Extreme I mean, fans. yeah, there's I mean, there, there's groups of girls that are waiting after every game for us that, you know, are constantly following your Facebook and your MySpace and, you know, and all the rest of it. And then, you know, I, I get a lot of a lot of messages with, you know, from, I guess, random, random girls saying, you know, what does a guy have? To, what does a girl have to do to get your attention? You know, or like, uh, hey, what's up? You're, you know, you're cute. I've been following your your soccer. How, how's it going? And, you know, I, I try and respond to as many messages as I can but you know sometimes messages like those I prefer not to respond to because I think once you kind of engage in maybe a relationship or you know in, even if you just engage in in conversation then it can kind of lead to more and more of an obsession and sometimes that can be you know you start to start watching your back a lot <laughs> yeah you know, I, hey look I'm not some big time athlete but I definitely am in radio and I know what you're talking about okay yeah. so we have we have those uh callers that call to the studio every day you know? <laughs> yeah. so I can you know I can relate to that because I believe if you feed into it then you know mm -hmm. this is you're feeding into them they're gonna think that oh it's cool to yeah. you know um so you haven't had any stalker issues or anything like that yeah, I mean, mostly the, the stalker issues are, you know, people who have, well, I, actually the stalker issues I, I had first were from guys and guys impersonate, really? impersonating my profile and this, a couple guys from, uh, you know, they kept stealing all my pictures from online and then making their own profiles and um, were messaging girls as me. And then, you know, I would get messages on my account saying, you're such an asshole. You know, why, what did you do this? What did you do that? And I'm like, whoa, you know, I haven't done any of this. And I actually had to talk to the owners of Facebook and MySpace and get these guys banned and get the profiles removed because it was kind of ruining my image. So. Wow. That's crazy. I was thought, I was thinking you were gonna say you had some gay guys that were. Uh, no. <laughs> well, I get those too. But. I mean, I guess either one would really be good for you. So. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you so much for coming into the studio and doing this, um, and shedding a little light on what you all go through um, on a day-to-day -day basis, being athletes trying to find love. All right, Stuart Holden, everybody. Thank you very much. We got Leslie on her new Facebook and MySpace. <laughs> thank you. This is part one of Athletes and Women. We have other players coming into the studio to talk about how they feel about women and, and how can they trust somebody uh, being in the field they're in. So stay tuned for that. This is Leslie Christine, and I'm out.